All right, I think we are live. Hey, how is it going? Lee Hayward here with the Total Fitness Bodybuilding video chat. Friday, March the 6th. And today I will be hanging out here for the next hour answering questions and basically, you know, shooting the breeze when it comes to fitness, nutrition, building muscle, losing fat, any specific challenges that you would like to uh, discuss when it comes to getting in your best shape, losing the gut, and uh, anything with regards to your workouts, your nutrition, mindset, strategies, all that kind of stuff. We're going to basically have a conversation here today and discuss that kind of stuff. So, first off, if you are tuning in live, let me know who's tuning in live to the video chat there now. Let me know if this is coming through loud and clear. If you can hear me, you can see me. If I'm waving my arms around and it's coming through, let me know uh, so that I can... Uh, proceed <laughs> with this video chat. I always want to do that little audio video check to make sure it is coming through loud and clear, and it is good stuff. Awesome, guys. Thank you for that. Uh, if you're brand new to the video chats, welcome, right? It's always nice to have new people tuning in. Uh, this is something I do every Friday, and I've been doing it for years. <laughs> it's something I actually really enjoy doing, just to have these conversations and we're just going to, uh, like I say, shoot the breeze now for the next little while. So if you're new, type in the letter N in the video chat. Let me know if you're brand new. Introduce yourself. And, of course, if you're a regular, type in the letter R. Let me know that you're a regular. So I see some some regulars are already tuning in. They know the, they know the drill. They're already posting their stuff in there. And if you're brand new, welcome. Right? It's always nice to have new people tuning in. And... Just to kind of give you a background, if you are new to these video chats, like my history with the whole, <laughs> this whole thing, I mean, I've been around since be before YouTube started. Like I started my first website back in 1997. And uh, back then, like there was nothing on the internet, not like it is today. I mean, the internet as we know it only came about in... Uh, two or sorry, in 1996. So I started my first website in 1997. So I mean, right in the infancy of the internet is when I started. And there was nothing online back then. To kind of put it in perspective, I remember the first time I ever logged on to the internet. I didn't even know what it was or how it worked or whatever. And I went to a search engine. There was no Google back then either. I went to Yahoo. Yahoo was the search engine back then. And I typed in bodybuilding and nothing came up. Nothing. The, like, the internet was empty. <laughs> like, if you can imagine that, it was empty. There was just some, some like, definition saying, like, bodybuilding is working out, lifting weights, and, you know, it, it was, but there was no, there was no articles or blog posts or workouts or any of that kind of stuff that we have today. So, back when I started my first website, I mean, it was, it was the infancy, like, the wild, wild west of the internet. And just by default, because there was nothing else there, the fact that I had a website, I was getting a lot of attention. Like people who, anybody who worked out and was interested in, in bodybuilding and fitness would find my website because it was only a handful of websites out there at the time. So it really took off. And then, of course, when YouTube came on board, all right, I started posting videos back then and I'm still doing it. Here we are, 2020, still at it, 23 years later, plugging away and, and it's because it's a it's a passion it's a passion of mine it's a labor of love if you will doing these video chats and and just interacting and and trying to help that's all it's all about is just trying to help you with you reaching your own fitness and fat loss goals so over the years like i was competing in bodybuilding you know started competing back in 1995 and that was my main motivation then you know to to really do well in competition I did my last bodybuilding show in 2011, took a break from it. And after I took a break from it, I really uh, kind of let myself go in terms of my health and fitness because back when I was competing in bodybuilding, I had this like all or nothing mentality where it was either like I was all in, you know, extreme, all, all out, like following a crazy contest cutting diet, going all out or there was no diet at all. So I would go through bouts of yo-yo dieting up and down with every bodybuilding competition that I did. And I always tried to justify it and saying, well, you know, if I'm not dieting, then I'm bulking, right? And bulking is really just an excuse to get fat. <laughs> That's a nice way of saying getting fat. 
So I went through that for years. And then when I stopped competing, well, I just started to get fat, you know, gradually got fatter and fatter and fatter. And I actually hit a low point right around 2016. That's when my son Harvey was born. And for me, I really let myself go. I mean, not that I didn't know what to do. It's just I couldn't get myself motivated to do it. And I really hit a slump. So for a few years there, uh, I, I was really, you know, at a low point, still doing the whole online thing in terms of like videos and chats and stuff, but I wasn't actually practicing what I preach. And over the last couple of years now, I really got my, my act together, if you will, and got myself back in shape in terms of I've got a system in place now that allows me to enjoy living a healthy lifestyle that's based on bodybuilding, but it's not the extreme approach. It's not this crazy cutting or, you know, extreme workouts or any of that stuff, but it's a lifestyle based approach. And that's what I'm really trying to help people with now is how you can make living a healthy bodybuilding lifestyle part of your own lifestyle, right? How you can reap the health benefits and feel good about yourself, maintain a lean physique, do so healthfully and not have to go to the extremes. It doesn't have to be this all or nothing crazy approach. You can actually have a well-balanced lifestyle, have it a healthy lifestyle and make it work. So that's what it's all about for me at this stage of the game. And uh, hopefully uh, I'll share some of those tips and insights with you over today's video chat so that you can do the same for yourself. So I see we got a lot of people tuning in, a lot of interaction going on there in the video chat. So I'm just going to basically jump right into our chat now and uh, see if we can get this going. Actually, I'm, I'm all out of coffee. I'm going to have to get me a coffee. Just one second, guys. One second there. Patricia, can you bring me in a, a, a coffee or something to drink, please? All right. Got to get myself something to wet the whistle. All right, guys. I, I'm going to be here flat a gab for a while, and I want to have a, want to have a, something to drink on hand. So we've got Dan is joining us. Brent is joining us. James tuning in. Uh, RC Randy spaceship. Uh, space Battleship Alex joining us. Uh, James is coming in from the UK. Yeah, let me know where you're tuning in from. It's so nice to see where people are from. Like, we have an international audience joining us. So, James is in the uh, UK, which is obviously it's in the evening over there. Uh, and he's brand new. So, welcome. Welcome to the video chat. Always nice to have new people tuning in. We have Chef Boy R. Lazy <laughs> joining us. Randy, Chad, uh, Brent's a regular. Jamie's tuning in. Hey, how's it going? Fitz Fitness is joining us. Awesome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody who's tuning in. Let us see. Can you? Oh, perfect. Here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I think you got your drinks mixed up. <laughs> the wrong bottle there, right? All right. So is it Harvey's time for his bottle, time for mine. Mine's a bottle of water. No, he's having a bad <laughs> All right. So let's see. Who's got the first question of the day? Let's see. Uh, first question. James is saying, I want to pop out the top of my chest. Okay, I guess to translate that, Build the upper chest. And when it comes to chest development, you really want to build the entire chest. Like in, instead of really thinking of like upper, lower, inner, outer, you really want to build the chest in general. But when it comes to chest development, a lot of times that upper area is, is the stubborn area for a lot of people, right? So what I recommend, if that is a stubborn area for you, try and make sure that you're including some incline work for the chest. So it could be an incline bench press variation, whether that's an incline barbell, incline dumbbell, incline chest press, like, you know, the hammer strength machine or whatever type of chest press you have available at your gym. You want to make sure that there's some sort of incline work there. And if it's a real stubborn area, that upper chest, you could even like prioritize it and do all incline bench work for a while. Like that, that's fine. You can do that. In fact, like a lot of bodybuilders, who want to prioritize their upper chest will purposely do that, you know, do all incline work. Another great one that a lot of, uh, a lot of people don't do, but I found it's, it's one of the best chest exercises is push-ups. 
it's like an underrated exercise, but push-ups are one of my favorite chest exercises of all times. Like before I even got into serious weight training, I did a lot of body weight exercises with push-ups because in my early days, uh, before I got into serious weight training, I was involved with martial arts and part of martial arts training included a lot of body weight exercises, a lot of push-ups. And I found that by doing those push-ups, it really gave my chest like a, a head start over a lot of, you know, the rest of my body. So if you want a bigger chest, get good at push-ups. It's something you can do on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a, a great exercise. And if you really want to focus the upper chest, do your push-ups with your feet elevated. Like you can elevate your feet on a bench or a, a chair or a step or something just to have your feet elevated. And it puts your body in that position that you would be if you were doing like an incline. So it's the same position you'd be if you were doing like an incline bench press or an incline chest press. And it just emphasizes more of the upper chest area instead of the more of the lower chest. So those are some great exercises. Uh, another one that I'm a big fan of is incline dumbbell flies, right? Getting that good stretch, uh, you know, with that incline angle, right? That really helps to target the upper chest. So, to kind of give you an example of a good workout that I'd recommend for the upper chest, start with some sort of incline bench press, incline barbell, dumbbell, chest press, something along those lines. Then do a stretch exercise, some sort of incline dumbbell fly. And uh, then you could probably do some sort of uh, peak contraction exercise, maybe like a pec deck fly, a cable crossover fly, uh, with the cable crossovers, you can, if you have access to one of those pull cable pulleys that have the adjustable ones, you can even do them uh, where you're bringing your hands up, so target more of the upper chest area like that, and then finish off with some push-ups. And that would be a fantastic chest exercise to hit all the angles of the chest, the mid-range stretch, peak contraction, and it's it will give you that, you know, that workout that you're looking for to really hit all the aspects of the chest, and of course prioritizing the upper chest in the process. So that's something that I would recommend. And again, push-ups, it's something you can do even outside the gym, you know, at home in your spare time, just to help get more blood flow and stimulation to the chest, especially if it's a stubborn area for you. Like sometimes I'll do push-ups throughout the day at home, you know, just as a little extra uh, to, to give you that muscle stimulation, that blood flow. And the more often you can pump blood into a muscle, the better it's going to be to help spur on growth, especially for stubborn areas, because the more blood flow, the more circulation, the more nutrients you're pumping into the muscle, the better it's going to respond. So those are a few tips that you can certainly incorporate into your workouts, James, and uh, give them a try and, and let me know how they work for you. All right. Who else got a question? Uh, scroll through. Fitz has a question. Every morning I have zero sugar Gatorade and a scoop of amino acids powder uh, for caffeine as well in it. Okay, oh, No, sorry. Let me read that again. Every morning I have a zero sugar Gatorade, a scoop of amino acid energy powder with some caffeine in it as well, a greens powder, I do it to replace energy drinks. Are greens powder he healthy? Okay, so I think you're, you're asking, are greens powders healthy? Yes, greens powders are healthy. Basically what a greens powder is, it's supplemental vegetables, right? Just like you take a protein powder to supplement your protein, you can take a greens powder to supplement your vegetables. And I, I personally use both because one of my habits that I make is every meal, I want to have protein and vegetables, protein and vegetables. Like I, and regardless of what I'm eating, regardless of what meal it is, if it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, a snack, I want to have protein, vegetables, protein, vegetables. So if I can't have solid food protein, I eat like meat, chicken, fish, eggs, you know, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese or something like that. I'll have a protein shake instead. So I'll have some sort of protein, whether it's food or supplement. And when it comes to vegetables, I'll either have solid food vegetables. My go-to is usually a big garden salad or it could be steamed or stir-fried vegetables or some sort of vegetables. And if I can't have vegetables, 
then I'll have a greens powder. And I find that that is my go-to. That's my backup. So I always have it. So personally, I like to take greens powder on a, a regular basis to make sure that I'm getting vegetables as well as protein with every meal. Um, as far as the different greens powders, th there's a lot of them available these days. Like go on, and like any supplement store should carry them. Like you can, you can get them at places like Costco. You can get them on Amazon, whatever. But bottom line, definitely a, a greens powder and a protein powder are like two staples when it comes to supplements. And, that, and I'm almost like, I almost don't even want to call them supplements because it's it's powdered food, right? Like I, I really just consider it another source of food, right? You can have solid food, vegetables, or you can have greens powder. You can have solid food, protein, or you can have protein powder. So uh, just use it for the convenience aspect. And of course, the, the cool thing about them is, uh, you know, like you can have it quick, convenient source anytime, you know, instant. And another tip that I like when it comes to the greens powder is uh, I, I usually don't mix it up in a drink. I usually just take the powder itself, the scoop of powder, or dump it in my mouth, and then chase it down with water. And I find that that's the easiest way to get it. And it's it, it doesn't ruin the drink because when it comes to greens powder, like even some of them are flavored or whatever, but it's generally not a, a pleasant drink. Like you wouldn't drink greens for the taste of it. Like a protein shake, a lot of them taste really good. And you could have the protein shake because you enjoy it. And again, it's a great source of protein. But when it comes to greens, like most people don't really enjoy the greens powder. So that's why I, I just take the scoop of powder, dump it in my mouth, chase it down with water. And I find it's almost like taking it the same as you would take a pill in that sense, right? Just to kind of get it in me because I want the nutritional value, but I don't really necessarily enjoy the taste of greens. And I find like if you mix greens with something else, it can kind of ruin the, the drink. Like if you mix greens with a protein shake, it kind of ruins the protein shake. Or if you mix greens with, um, you know, in your case, like your Gatorade, it's probably gonna ruin the taste of the Gatorade. So uh, I, I just take the greens powder by itself. And I find that's the easiest, quickest way to get it. Uh, it takes a bit of practice if you've never done that before, like just pour, the powder in your mouth and chase it down with water. So just start with a small amount first and just get used to it. Basically how you want to do it is just have the powder in your mouth and then get the water in there and kind of like swish it around and, and swallow it down that way. Because one drawback, some people put the powder in and then if you kind of like breathe it in, then you get all the dry powder in the back of your throat and you're like choking and coughing it up. So don't breathe it in or don't swallow the powder dry. Make sure you put some water and like swish it around. So it's almost like a, a greens paste and it's a lot easier to, to to get it in you that way without you know without choking or gagging on it in the process but that's that's how i take my greens and that's how i take a lot of powder supplements that you use in small amounts like obviously i wouldn't do that with a protein powder because you're taking too much like a big scoop of protein powder is too much to swallow like that but uh, green scoops are small. Creatine, same thing. It, it's small, so I usually just take the creatine, dump it in my mouth, chase it down with water. It, it's the easiest way to get it. And um, like I say, you, it, that's definitely a healthy way to uh, supplement your vegetable intake. All right, another question here is, uh, this is from James saying, my metabolic rate is ridiculous. How can I slow it? I wouldn't want to slow it. I mean, if you have a fast metabolism, that's actually a good thing, right? That's not a that's not a drawback at all. I mean, use that to your advantage because if you have a fast metabolism, chances are you're probably quite lean and you're going to make leaner gains. And one of the biggest things you're going to find, especially as you get older, is it's harder to make leaner gains. It's harder to keep that body fat off. So if you have a fast metabolism now, use that to your advantage. Even though the gains will be slower, uh, the, they'll be better quality. And I would rather a slow quality gains versus fast, poor quality gains. Because when people gain weight fast, it's usually gain in excess body fat. And you don't want to mistake that. Like a lot of people, when they're bulking up, they're just looking at the number on the scale, trying to slam back as much food as they can and try and just put on weight. And un unless you have some special goal where you just want to be bigger and you don't care if it's fat or muscle, right? Like for, an, for aesthetic reasons, go for slow quality gains, right? Don't just try and bulk up for the sake of bulking up because what's going to end up happening is 
yeah, you'll gain a bunch of weight, but then it's it's not quality weight. You're gaining a lot of excess fat, and then eventually you're just going to have to diet all that extra fat off again. I'd rather slow and steady right from the start. And and if if I could kind of go back in time and, and like give my older self some some insights, that's one of the things I, I would have done. I would have avoided the 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 extreme bulking that I used to go through. Like I used to try and like force feed myself and bulk up. And, and that was a mistake because all that happens is you end up gaining a bunch of body fat in the process. I would rather uh, slower quality gains. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, what you're experiencing there. Just focus on the high nutrient dense foods, you know, protein, the vegetables, good complex carbohydrates, and, and don't force it. Like eat enough that you're fueling your body and let it grow. Don't try and force it to grow, right? Like that that's a mistake. When you force it, it usually it, it, it backfires. You end up gaining a bunch of fat that you don't need. So take take it slow and just let yourself grow at a more slower, manageable pace. And of course, it'll be better quality gains. And you won't have to be going through the bulking and cutting and bulking and cutting and yo-yoing and all that, right? Uh, what else we got there? Uh, SWAT or SWAT, S-U-A-T, I don't know how you pronounce that, SWAT is asking, is Winstrel good for weight loss? Um, well, I, I'm, that's obviously, it's it's an anabolic steroid. I mean, it will help with weight loss, but it, it help in, in a way that, you know, it's, it helps to increase uh, hormone production, which can help to build muscle. But I mean, it's, it's not a fat burner. So, I mean, if, if your goal is weight loss, don't go looking for drugs like that. Get your diet, get your training, get all that in check. Like that's, what's going to burn the fat, not taking performance enhancing drugs. I mean, obviously it could help the process, but like there, there's a lot of people out there who are taking performance enhancing drugs and they're still fat. Like you need your diet and training in check. Like it's that that's, that's the key, right? Regardless of what you're taking, if you don't have your diet and training in check, then no, it's, it's, it's not going to help. Jerseys is joining us. Brando is joining us. RC joining in. Uh, saying 23 years later, you still look strong, youthful. Love uh, the, the videos I did, or the your dad and love your dad and a, and a great dad to Harvey. Okay, thanks for the comments there. Appreciate it. Uh, one thing that I have coming in the near future, guys, you've probably seen some of the pictures that I posted. I shared some of my community tab on YouTube. I also shared it on my Facebook and Instagram. My father and I shot a workout video series. We've got the raw video footage shot, and uh, it'll be edited over the next week or so. So you'll start seeing those videos um, probably within a week. And uh, it's, it's a workout series I did with my dad. My dad's 69 years old, and he's trying to get himself back in shape. And, and it's nice to see because back when I started, like my dad was the guy who motivated me to work out. But like a lot of people, you get busy with life, you get older, you start to put on some weight, you know, you kind of put your health and fitness on the back burner. But he's in the stage now where he wants to lose the gut, get back in shape. So I'm putting him through a, a get back in shape workout program. And we videoed it all. So uh, that's something you can look forward to. And it's, uh, I enjoyed doing it. And he enjoyed it as well. And I think they're going to, like so far, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. People are really looking forward to seeing those videos. So uh, it's, it's me and my dad right in their training set for set. And I'm taking them through a, a three day per week, uh, get back in shape workout routine. So that's something you can look forward to over the next few weeks to see those. All right, where else we to second guys. Um, we have Jamie tuning in from Scotland. Welcome. We have Brent from Florida. Uh, Randy is from Saskatchewan. This is living in Regina now. Uh, we have Jacob's tuning in, and Jacob is from Thailand. Welcome, guys. Like I say, we've got an international audience. So, I mean, if, if you're in Thailand, then obviously this is a Saturday morning, right? This is a Friday afternoon for me. It's probably Friday evening for some, and Jacob is a Saturday morning. Uh, Alex is saying, any recommendations for over, older lifters having issues with recovery? Yeah, definitely. This is something everybody's going to have to deal with as father time starts to catch up. 
when you get older, you don't have the same recovery. You don't have the same, uh, and it's not just muscle recovery. It's, it's joint recovery. It's tendon recovery. It's just your central nervous system. Like I can't handle the workouts that I used to when I was in my teenage years and in my early twenties, like I, I've, where I've been doing this for so long, like I found the workouts that I could do as a teenager changed in my twenties. And then the workouts I was doing in my twenties changed in my thirties. And then of course in my thirties, it's changed now that I'm in my forties. You have to respect your body more as you get older. Not saying that you can't train hard and you can't push yourself, but you just have to respect yourself more. So little things like I'm not pushing the intensity in the gym. Like I'm not doing these crazy advanced like high intensity strategies of like forced reps and cheating and negatives and whatever. Training to positive muscular failure to the point where you can't do another repetition. Like that's that's hard enough. You don't have to kill yourself, right? What was it Lee Haney used to say? Uh, you want to stimulate the muscle, not annihilate the muscle. And that, that's one thing. Like you see a lot of the guys, especially the younger guys, like they're doing an exercise and the bench press, prime example, right? Right. They'll, they'll rep out to failure on the bench press and then they'll get their spotter to help them do, you know, three or four more reps. Like you don't need to push yourself like that, especially as you get older. Positive muscular failure is enough for most people. Like, and in fact, like I, I would argue that almost everybody could make great gains just training to positive muscular failure. You don't need to push yourself to failure and beyond because when you go beyond, like you're, you're opening up the door for injury and that, that could set your progress back way more than anything else. Like the, the risk to reward ratio of, of trying to go extremely hardcore and pushing yourself to failure and beyond, it's, it's very often not in your favor because if you end up getting hurt, then that's going to just slow your progress even more. Like I, I, I've said this over and over again, but it's, it's worth repeating. Like if, if you stop a set short of failure, that's not going to hinder your progress. If you skip a workout or you have a bad workout, you go in there and you know, like I'm not feeling it today and you have a half ass workout, that's not going to hinder your progress. But if you do too much and you push yourself beyond your limits and you end up pulling, straining or tearing something, getting injured, that's definitely going to hinder your progress, right? There's nothing that's going to hinder your progress more than an injury. So as you get older, you need to really focus on injury prevention. That is priority number one when it comes to your training. And uh, you also need to give yourself adequate time to rest and recover between workouts. So in my case, and for, for most of my coaching students, especially guys who are, you know, in their 40s, 50s, 60s and beyond, every other day, you know, work out one day, take the next day off. Work out one day, take the next day off. And then on those off days from weight training, that's when you can get in some some low intensity exercise, like cardio, right? Getting outside for a walk or doing some gentle form of exercise. Like if it doesn't have to be high intensity weight training. Like I'm a big fan of, of like I, I refer to it as my yin and yang training method, where I high intensity weight training one day, low intensity cardio the next. I know some people like to do maybe high intensity weight training one day and then maybe yoga the next, like, even though yoga is a bit deceiving because that's actually a, a very challenging form of exercise, but like anything, you can make it as easy or as hard as you want, but it's, it's more of a rejuvenation type of exercise. It doesn't really break the body down, but it helps to rejuvenate it and build it up. So that's something you might want to do. Weight training alternated with yoga and that could help with recovery, but for me and for my main goal of, of burning body fat, it's usually uh, weight training one day and cardio the next. And I find when I alternate them like that, uh, it works with the body's natural recovery because on that off day from weight training and then you're doing that low intensity cardio, it's active recovery. So you're still getting exercise. You're still you know, getting the health benefits of daily exercise, but it's working with your body's natural recovery. You're not breaking it down all the time. You're giving it a chance to rebuild, rejuvenate, and recover, and I find that that works really well. Um, other things you want to look into, obviously, nutrition is huge. Getting adequate sleep is huge. Just living a healthy lifestyle in general, like all, all the things. It's, it's so much more than what you do in the gym, right? The gym is like one hour, right? One hour of your day. It's what you're doing the other 23 hours of the day that's really the bigger picture, it's going to determine your success or failure when it comes to reaching your fitness and fat loss and muscle building goals. So you want to have that bigger picture, you know, make it a lifestyle and not just focusing on, on the workouts themselves. Like 
in the greater scheme of things, like the actual workout is is a small piece of the puzzle. Like I would say the workouts, maybe 20% of your results, right? Your lifestyle, your nutrition, and you know, all that other stuff makes up like 80% of the results, especially when it comes to fat loss, right? So, I mean, if, if your main goal is to uh, burn body fat and, and build lean muscle, you really need to focus on, on what you're doing outside the gym, uh, even more so than what you're doing in the gym. Have a sip of water and we'll move on. Brent is asking, what would you say for the lower chest building? I have a bench, dumbbells to work with, and body weight, of course. Um, just a, a lot of the same stuff that I mentioned before, the same things that I mentioned to work the, the upper chest. If, if your main goal is to develop more of the lower chest, do the same things. You could do it on a, a flat or a decline bench. Uh, you know, but the, the same principles apply, you know, focus on some sort of a, a compound mid-range exercise, some sort of bench press variation, some sort of uh, fully stretched exercise, like a fly variation. Uh, then you want to do a peak contraction exercise, some sort of um, ideally a pec deck fly or a cable fly. Now, if you don't have cables, uh, you're, you're kind of limited in that sense, but you can still do bench presses, flies, push-ups. All those exercises are going to build the overall chest and the angle of the bench is really going to determine whether it's upper, you know, the overall or the lower. So if, if the lower chest is more of your priority, then try and do some of those exercises in a decline position. That would definitely target more of the lower chest. All right. Uh, Unicorn Blood V2. All right. Interesting name. It says, uh, good morning. It's Ron here from the Philippines. I have questions regarding lumbar disc. I have pain after working out legs. All right. Uh, I, I, to really address that question, I kind of need to know more information about it. But I would assume if you're having pain with the lumbar area, it's probably after doing something where you're loading up the spine. Squats. Prime, prime example, like if you're doing heavy squats, that's compressing the spine places a lot of work on. Like a squat is just as much a back exercise as it is a leg exercise. So it, you, you're probably having some issues when it comes to that. If possible, uh, you can do other exercises instead if the squat is causing you problems. Again, you didn't specifically mention it in your question, but I'm just kind of like putting two and two together here and making an assumption that it's probably the squat that's causing you to have the, the lower back lumbar issues. So anytime I feel like my back is extra sore or hurting, then I'm not going to put a loaded barbell on my back and do squats. All right, I'll go do leg presses. I'll do leg extensions, leg curls. I'll do step ups and lunges. And there's so many other exercises you can do to isolate the legs without having a loaded barbell on your back. All right. So that's something that you can certainly look into. Another thing that helps as well is with your leg training, pre-exhausting your legs with isolation work first, so like leg extensions and leg curls, and then do your big compound exercises, your squats or your leg presses or whatever, that allows you to do those exercises and utilize much less weight, so you're not loading up the back as much, but you're actually getting more muscle activation in your legs because they're pre-exhausted. So that's something that I very often do, is like at the start of a leg workout, start with the leg extensions, pre-exhaust the quadriceps, you know, start with the uh, leg curls, pre-exhaust the hamstrings, and then you, you can get away with lifting a lot less with your big compound exercises and still get a, a good leg workout. So something you might want to look into. Another thing that helps a lot too is um, stretching, you know, stretching after your workouts. Uh, I like to just hang from a pull-up bar you know, at, at the gym, just grab the pull-up bar and, and hang. It helps to decompress the spine. If you have access to an inversion table, uh, that's a great thing to, to do to decompress the spine. I've got one, you know, in my basement here. Uh, you can pretty much pick up inversion tables, you know, at, at a lot of places now, like Costco carries them. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. You can probably look in your local classifieds and find one. But an inversion table is a great investment for anybody especially if you have any back pain because when you invert yourself with an inversion table it helps to decompress the spine and it just feels really good it helps to improve improve blood flow and circulation but it's it's a great exercise so anytime i have any back pain uh, I, I like to use that inversion table 
And I, I try to use it on a regular basis anyway to kind of like as a preventative measure because regularly decompressing the spine and stretching it out like that uh, can really help prevent future problems from, from occurring. Okay, what else? Samir is joining in. Says, your three-day workout, it's amazing. Seeing uh, great changes. Doing it for three months now with some variations. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Good stuff. And, and Unicorn uh, saying, guys, hit the like button. All right, appreciate it. Thanks for the support. That's right. If you enjoy these videos, if you enjoy it, and you, uh, like, yeah, hit that like button, right? There's a big thumbs up. Give it a smash, right? The more likes, the better. <laughs> uh, What's the next one? Big Bad Bolts is joining in, and he says, Lee, I have a sort of an imbalance with my body. It feels like I have misaligned hips. My left hip is higher than my right. I think that has led to my shoulder trap imbalance right higher than the left. That's a pretty common issue for a lot of people. I mean, most people probably have like one shoulder that's higher than the other, one hip that's higher than the other, you know, one side that's more developed than the other. Very few people are perfectly proportioned and aligned. So, I mean, like I have that myself, like naturally one shoulder is higher than the other when I'm standing up. If, I not, if I'm not consciously aware of it, you know, like I do have some imbalances. So the fact that you're aware of it is a good thing. And like, it, it, it's it's hard to really diagnose it because it, there's a lot of things that could be causing this. But one thing that I would definitely recommend, you know, stretching, mobility work, you know, even doing things like yoga can help to balance out the body. If, if you've never done it before, it can really help. And, you know, th that's some great preventative measure. But if you need to, like, try and adjust your workouts accordingly and, and do things that just feel more comfortable for you and your body. Like, for example, if, if you find exercises like squats bother your hips, well, then don't squat. Find another variation to do instead. You know, also trying to do more single limb exercises where you're working each side independently can very often help. And uh, a while back, I actually posted a video playlist uh, covering single limb exercises that you can do for all your major muscle groups. There's a whole total body workout uh, well, it's, it's, it's all, all workouts are covered. I mean, there's chest, shoulders, arms, back, legs, uh, er everything covered, but it utilizes all single limb exercises. If, if you want to find it, just open up the playlists tab on my main YouTube channel, scroll through the playlists and you'll see it. Uh, but that's something that you might want to uh, incorporate because when you're working each side independently, it helps to uh, correct a lot of these imbalances that you're probably uh, dealing with. And it might uh, allow you to help to, correct them over time. Now, the, the way it is when you have an imbalance, like you may never fully correct it. Like there, you may always have an imbalance. Like, you know, your one side's bigger than the other, stronger than the other, or higher or lower than the other. But you can take action to try and minimize the imbalance the best you can. So those are some things that can definitely help, right? The single limb exercises. But when it comes to your workouts, just listen to your body. And if you find that a certain exercise or certain move doesn't feel right, try another variation instead. You know, like sometimes machines you, you work better than barbells. Sometimes dumbbells work better than barbells because, again, you get that more freedom of movement and it may feel more comfortable. But, again, it's something that you're you're really going to have to experiment with on your own. Now, if you would like some help with it, like to kind of discuss it in more detail, hey, shoot me an email, right? I, I'm, I'm willing to chat and, and help you out. So, I mean, you can always email me. Uh, my personal email address is leeh at leehayward.com. And uh, you can email me, and I'll be happy to have a chat with you. Uh, just, let's see what else. James is saying, I tend to start with dumbbell presses, then move on to flies on an incline with no rest. I will try getting elevated push-ups in my workout to emphasize more upper chest. Uh, another thing I'm going to encourage you there, I mean, that that's solid stuff what you're doing, but... This idea of, of trying to do exercises with no rest in between, like th there's a time and a place for that. But if your main goal is building muscle, having adequate rest periods between sets can actually help. Because if you do your sets back to back, like in a superset fashion where you're okay, you're going from a dumbbell press straight into a fly, it's going to severely limit the weight you can lift. 
And what's going to end up happening is you're going to start running into more cardiovascular fatigue versus pure muscle fatigue. So if your main goal is to build muscle, I would actually recommend having a rest period in between each exercise. Now, you won't feel the same level of exhaustion and, you know, it's, it's not, how can I put it? Like when, when you do exercises back to back in a superset fashion, like you probably get a lot of fatigue, you get a lot of pump and stuff like that, but you're not lifting a lot of weight. So you're not actually stimulating a pure muscle growth in terms of like maximizing muscle fiber stimulation. It's a lot of just like fatigue buildup, blood flow, uh, lactic acid, and of course, cardiovascular fatigue. But if you want pure muscle fatigue and pure muscle stimulation, those rest periods are critical. And you'll you'll notice it. Like if you take a couple minutes rest in between sets, you'll feel way stronger. You'll be able to lift heavier, get more repetitions, and actually work the muscle harder than if you're trying to rush through your workout. Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong because there, there's a time and a place for everything. Like if your main goal is building up your muscular endurance, then obviously supersets and short rest periods help. But if your main goal is is to build muscle, then those rest periods, you know, definitely, you know, can, can aid with the muscle growth. So I wouldn't recommend trying to rush your weight training, right? If, if take your time, those rest periods can make a big difference. Uh, okay. Unicorn saying, Lee, I want to buy your eBooks, but how I'm from Asia. You can buy eBooks from anywhere in the world. As far as I know, I mean, you can order them, download them anywhere in the world. So, um, if, if you're having trouble with it again, send me an email and, and I'll help you with that personally, but, uh, you should be able to order them right online. Shouldn't be a problem there. If, if you're having trouble with it, again, send me an email and, and I'll help you with that personally, but uh, you should be able to order them right online. Shouldn't be a problem there. Frederick is joining in. He says, hi, I'm so glad I finally get to catch one of these live. Keep up the good work and all the inspiration you give. Thanks, Frederick. Glad you're tuning in as well. Welcome to the video chat. Mad Evils says, Lee, I saw you were at Clearwater Beach a few weeks ago. How did you like it? Is the West Coast better than the East? Uh, I love Clearwater. I've been there several times. Like when I was younger, like throughout my teenage years, uh, li living at home with my parents, like Florida was our vacation hotspot. So every summer, that was where we'd go for our, our summer vacation. And we, we did that for several years. Now, it was usually more in the St. Pete Beach area. That's where we used to go to a lot, which is pretty close to Clearwater. But I, I love it down there. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's just such a nice place. And I've got a lot of friends in, in, in that area. So, yeah, I had a fantastic time. We were down there for a month. And a month just, like, flew by <laughs> like that. Uh, I think next year I'll probably see if I can stretch it out even longer and spend more time down there because it's it's such a beautiful area and we can got lots of friends down in that area. But yeah, I, I love it down there. It's nice to escape the cold Canadian winter. All right, another question from Fitz. Are multivitamins worth taking? Multivitamins and I guess supplements in general, you need to look at them for what they are. It is a supplement to your diet. Like it's it's not going to fix a bad diet. Like you can't eat like crap and say, well, I'll pop a vitamin and that's boom, I'm, I'm that solves everything. But it, it does help, right? It does help. It's just kind of like a little insurance policy to ensure that you're meeting all your basic vitamin and mineral needs. I personally take a multivitamin every day. Uh, just, just to kind of like as that extra insurance, as I mentioned, but you still need to have the foundation, you know, proper diet, lots of protein, lots of vegetables, lots of healthy fats, like making sure you're eating natural unprocessed foods, getting in high nutrient dense foods. And then the vitamins and the supplements are a little extra. If, if you're looking for the big ones that I would recommend supplementing, like a multivitamin is great, but some of the key ones that most people are deficient in magnesium. Most people are not getting enough magnesium. So I recommend supplementing with that. Zinc. Most people are not getting enough zinc. B vitamins. Like th that's pretty much like the whole spectrum of B vitamins. Most people are not getting enough B vitamins either. So if you're looking for some individual ones, a, a magnesium supplement, a zinc supplement, a B complex, 
Vitamin D3, another huge one most people are not getting enough of. Uh, these are all real critical ones that I would recommend pretty much everybody take because it's kind of like universal across the board. When you look at the average, most people are getting suboptimal levels of magnesium, zinc, B, and, and vitamin D3. So you definitely want to take um, those if you are looking to uh, basically cover all your nutritional bases when it comes to vitamin and minerals. And then, of course, the multivitamin is, is another one that you can take as well. All right, Lee Dunnigan's tuning in for us. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Abram is joining in. He says, I was going to ask you, do you ever get night sweats? I have a fan. It's nice and cool, and you s still wake up three times a night dripping with sweat, and it's getting annoying. Um, night sweats. Sometimes I, I do, but it, it's usually it's usually more weather related, right? Like in the summertime when it's hotter, I, I sometimes you know sweat more in the nighttime. But I have had it in the past, and I know it can be annoying if you do sweat overnight. One thing that I would do uh, if if I ever you know go through phases where I'm experiencing like sweating a lot is I would wear a t-shirt to bed. And then if I had to wake up in the middle of the night, I would actually change the t-shirt because I'd like almost like sweat through my t-shirt. And then I put on a dry one like halfway through the night. And I found that that would made it more comfortable. And of course, it also prevented me from sweating through the bed sheets as much. But yeah, I mean, I have experienced that in the past. I don't experience it as much now that I'm older. But when I was younger, like in my 20s, uh, I used to get it a lot more. Um I don't know if there's a really a, a big cause, but maybe it's just fast metabolism and everything else. You I mean your body is just releasing a lot of heat, you know, uh, but it, it can be annoying for sure. I mean, I, I, I can relate to what you're going through there. I used to wake up, like say soaked in sweat and that's what I would do. I'd change my t-shirt, right? I'd, I'd wear a t-shirt to bed then change it halfway through the night. And then by the time I woke up again the next morning, I'd probably be soaked through the second t-shirt, right? I mean, it's, it's not comfortable, but you know, I, I definitely dealt with it but I don't have it as much anymore now that I'm a bit older. All right, next question. This one is from Lee Lee Dunnigan. How can or how, can you recommend some foods for good gut health and to reduce inflammation? I've been suffering with some stomach cramps for a while. Gut health, a lot of natural unprocessed foods, big ones, you know, like your fruits and vegetables, that's where you're going to get your, your natural enzymes and, and vitamins and minerals. That's definitely a big one. But you can also supplement with probiotics and digestive enzymes. That helps a lot. I have I personally take both. Uh, the ones that I recommend are from Bioptimizers. Those are very high potency digestive enzymes and probiotics. Um, if, if you want to check it out, I'll, I'll post a link in the... Actually, here, I'll just type it in the video chat there now. Want to check it out, and, and for those of you who are going to be catching the replay of this, just make sure that is the correct link. <laughs> I'll just do a check here. But the, the the digestive enzymes and probiotics can definitely help, especially if you have any digestive issues. And the cool thing about them, yeah, that's the right link. There we go. So I just typed the link into the video chat window. So those of you who are watching now. If, you know, you can you can check it out after. You don't need to go there now, but like say, if you need to look in for digestive enzyme and probiotics, you can check out that link that I posted. Bottom line, what it does is it helps your body to break down the foods you're eating. Because a lot of times when we have issues with our gut health, and as you get older, your body doesn't produce as much digestive enzymes as it did when you're younger. That's why, like, you know, like teenagers and young people like they can pretty much eat anything they want and they're they don't have gas or bloating or any digestive issues but then as you get older all of a sudden you start to experience digestive issues gas bloating heartburn all that kind of stuff and if, if you do then that could be a sign that you know you, you probably need to be supplementing with some digestive enzymes and probiotics to help with that but also natural unprocessed foods like most people who have gut issues, they're eating a lot of processed foods, which are devoid of natural enzymes. And it's harder for your body to break down and digest and utilize the nutrients. And of course, in a lot of cases, the nutrients are stripped from those foods. So 
natural unprocessed foods, fruits and vegetables, like every single meal, I make sure to have some like ideally vegetables, but you can also have fruit as well, like vegetables, fruit, as well as protein with every meal. Like that's my staple. Like that's my foundation that I base all my meals around. And I find if I do that, not only do I feel better, I have more energy, I can stay leaner, uh, but it, it just also helps with gut health as well. All right. So that's a huge one. And it's a great source of natural fiber. Like I don't supplement with any type of fiber supplement. I get my fiber through natural unprocessed foods, the fruits and the veggies. And that's where I get all my fiber. And I find it keeps you regular, keeps you feeling good. All right. And most people are not getting enough fruits and veggies. Like what, what's the recommended somewhere like 10 servings a day. Like how many people do you know are getting 10 servings a day of fruits and vegetables? You know, very few, but those that do feel better. I pretty much guarantee you that. And if, if you're not a big fruit and veggie eater, then it's something you want to build up gradually. Like just don't go from eating like no vegetables to like trying to force feed vegetables. Like look at ways how you can build it up gradually over time. So like over the course of several weeks, increase your vegetable intake so that your body can tolerate it. Because if you go from not eating any vegetables to all of a sudden like eating a ton of vegetables, it could cause bloating and gas and, and a whole bunch of issues because it's kind of like a shock to the system. Your body's not used to it. So build it up gradually. Little things like, you know, having vegetables with every meal, even if it's like start your dinner with a salad, you know, supplement with greens powder, like we mentioned earlier. Um, you know, instead of having sweets, try and satisfy that sweet tooth with fruit, you know, or, or berries and things like that. Natural unprocessed foods. That's the way to go. I mean, it, it's so simple. Like the, the, the more... The more you bring your diet back to a natural, unprocessed diet, the better it works and the better you feel, right? Like a lot of people try to overcomplicate it, but very often the, the solution is to simplify it, not to complicate it. The simpler, the better, more often than not. All right, another question. This one is from Jacob asking, high reps and low reps, do they have the same benefits? Not necessarily. I mean, well, both help, but uh, obviously lower reps with heavier weight is going to be more for strength and uh, and higher reps is better for hypertrophy, you know, more and more conditioning, more muscular endurance. I kind of nowadays tip more towards the higher reps because it suits me, my goals and, and what I'm training for. Like I'm not interested in, in just, I'm not interested in powerlifting anymore. Like I've done that. I've, I've had my share of injuries from powerlifting. Uh, I, I rather train higher reps, more time under tension and just simply getting a good workout, feeling the muscles work, focusing on a quality workout simply than rather than simply trying to move heavy weight. So nowadays I tend to err more towards the higher reps, but low rep training has its benefits. You know, I mean, it, it really depends on what it is you're training for right? Like if, if your goal is strength and power, uh, then yeah, you definitely need to include some low rep work in there. But with that being said, you can supplement that with high rep work, right? Like I've seen a lot of, uh, like, like a lot of people think it's, it's one or the other, but no, you can use both, right? Like even when I was training with, for powerlifting and like a lot of top level powerlifters, they still supplement their workouts with high repetition exercises to develop, you know, the, the areas that they're working. And, you know, that, that that can help to aid with the strength and the development of these muscles and, and just make you stronger all over. So it's it's not like either or. It, it's You want to include both. All right. RC is saying, do you recommend neck twists slash stretch? I do them before every workout. Yeah, I do recommend uh, doing some neck exercises. In fact, I've got a couple warm up videos. If you just do a Google search for, or YouTube search for like Lee Hayward warm up, uh, there's one that's a follow along 10 minute long warm up mobility routine that you can do. And uh, I can't remember the exact title, but it's something. But if you search for like Lee Hayward warm up, it should show up in, in the search. But the very first thing that I do is, is warm up the neck. And the neck is a very neglected area. Like most people don't do anything for their neck. But simple things, you know, just like head rotations up and down, you know, side to side, ear to shoulder, right? Little things like that can make a huge difference. And I like to do that, you know, th throughout the day. But, you know, you can definitely do it as part of your warm up before your workout as well. And it's good for 
strengthening the neck, but also just to loosen up that tight area. Because a lot of us, our neck is very stiff and rigid, especially if you're doing a lot of work on the computer or, you know, you're, you get the text head, like a lot of people down on their phone, da 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 da, da. Like the neck gets very stiff. And of course you get that bad posture and that hump back and everything else doing some exercise for your neck can really help with that. So yeah, that's, that's a good that you're doing it. And I definitely recommend it. All right, let's see what else. Drink of water first. Um, someone's saying, please email me. I really want to download your program. Please email me. Well, I tell you what, I don't know your email address, so you email me. <laughs> if, okay? if, if, you, if you need to get in touch with me, send me an email. Lee H at Lee Hayward .com. And that's, that's unicorn blood is asking that, right? You send me an email and I'll respond there. Next question. This one is from the eel. I think it is Z E E L Z E O. This is for cardio. Is it necessary to do intervals such as a four minute warm up, five minutes fast, two minutes, cool down, repeat, or is it okay to keep the same pace for the same amount of time? It's up to you. I mean, I, I personally just do steady state cardio for the most of it. I, I'm not I, like, don't just, just do it. Seriously. Just, just do it. Don't overthink it. Like everybody thinks, you know, okay, what is it? Four minutes, warm up, two minutes, this three minutes, that five minutes. Just, just do your cardio. Seriously. Uh, unless you're training for some sort of specific, you know, you've got some specific protocol and you're training to be an endurance athlete or you're training to be a sprinter or, or whatever, like you don't need to overcomplicate it. Just do it. <laughs> like when I do my cardio, like I'm, I'm not thinking of that stuff. I just get out there and do it. Seriously. Like if I'm going out for a walk, I just go out for a walk. I don't think about, okay, I'm going to walk fast or slow or speed it up or cool it down. I just do it. If I'm going for a bike ride. I just do it. I mean, so now you'll get some natural intervals in there depending on where you're going. Like if, if I'm going for a bike ride and I'm riding hills, well, obviously if I'm climbing hill, well, that's high intensity. If I'm going downhill, that's low intensity. If I'm on the flat, that's kind of moderate. I mean, so you get natural variation that way, but like, don't overthink it. Just, just do it. That's the main thing. And uh, when I'm at the gym, uh, when it comes to cardio, like if, if I was doing, let's just say I was walking on the treadmill. Yeah, I might, you know, for my first minute or two, just walk on the flat, you know, at a moderate pace. And then I gradually just build up, build up the incline, build up the speed a little bit. And then, you know, once I get to a, a good pace, I usually keep it at the same and for the duration of my workout. But again, you don't need to overthink it. The, the bottom line is just do it, especially if you're doing it for fat loss. Like it's, it's just a calorie burning tool. I mean, obviously it's helping to improve your heart health and your blood flow circulation and, and all that good stuff as well. But don't, don't overthink it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay. What else we got there? Um, uh, Lee, you're, you look great, but is there a reason for your size being smaller? Yeah, I'm losing weight. <laughs> I'm getting a lot leaner and I want to be leaner. I'm purposely eating cleaner. And a lot of people ask me this, like they say, Lee, you've lost weight. You're looking so much leaner. Like, are, are, what are you doing? I'm not getting fat anymore. That's the thing. I, <laughs> I'm not getting fat anymore because in the past I used to let myself get fat and how I got fat was eating crap, right? I, I ate too much crap back in the day and like not that long ago. Like I'll give you a prime example of how it was like, especially, in, you know, around 2016, 2017, that range, like this was right after my son was born. If, if you have young kids, right, you're going through that phase, you know what it's like. I mean, if you've got a crying baby, you're like you're not sleeping throughout the night. You're mentally exhausted because lack of sleep and just all the extra responsibilities of, of having a, a baby. Like, if you think you're busy without kids, wait till you get kids. And then you realize, okay, you realize just how busy, <laughs> you realize what busy is. Because I used to think I was busy, right, bef before we had Harvey. And then when he came along, then I realized, like, holy crap, I had so much free time that I used to waste. It was ridiculous. Like, now everything has to be planned out. Like you just can't pick up and go. Like everything has to be planned. Like, oh, do we do we have the diaper bag? Do we have a change of clothes? Do we got the bottle? Do we got this? Like everything has to be planned and, and thought out. Whereas before we could just drop stuff at the 
at a moment's notice and, and you know go somewhere and do things but now I, I can't do that anymore everything has to be structured and planned and anyway uh, it got to the point where i i was just caught up with everything that i let my fitness go down i was like man i'm too tired to go to the gym today i'll do it tomorrow and the next thing you know like oh, tomorrow rolls around i'll do it on monday i'll get back on track on monday you know same with the diet like i was like man i don't feel like meal prep in the day i'll just order a pizza or order takeout or something and i'll get back on track tomorrow and then of course tomorrow rolls around oh, still tired i'll get back on track on monday and all these little decisions, they started to add up. And then before I know it, I'm looking in the mirror and like, who's this fat slob looking back at me? Right? Because I just, I got lazy, right? I, I just got lazy. I knew better, but I wasn't doing what I knew I should do. So I really just got my, my shit together, for lack of a better word. And I said, you know what? This is not the life I want to live. This is not the direction I want to go. So now I make conscious effort to make better food choices every meal. And the cool thing is, is once you make that a habit, then it's not hard. Like the hardest part is that initial change. But once you make it a change in a habit, and this is now what you do, then it's easy. Like it's easy for me to eat clean because it's, I enjoy it. My palate has changed and I get more eating satisfaction from like lean protein, fruits and vegetables and natural unprocessed food than I do from junk food. Like Every now and then, like, we'll still go to a restaurant or we might go out to, like, a, a social event or, you know, we had Christmas holidays, you know, a couple months ago and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I'm not that I don't eat junk food from time to time, but when I do eat it, like, I don't enjoy it. Like, I, I, I don't enjoy the way it makes me feel. I don't enjoy the, you know, thinking that I'm putting all that crap in my body. But when I eat good, healthy food, I actually enjoy it. It feels good. It satisfies my hunger and my appetite. And your palate will change. Like a lot of people who are struggling with their weight, like you're craving the junk food because that's all you're eating. That's what your body is adapted to. But if you can make that transition, and even if you just slowly make that transition, it doesn't have to be like an on or off switch, like, you know, where you just go from one extreme to the other. Like you can gradually transition. And that's what I recommend, gradually transition. But once you do make it, then you'll start to crave the good stuff and you'll naturally shy away from the bad stuff just not because of willpower or determination or because like you're on a diet it's just because you don't want it anymore and that's where i'm at now and it's such a a great way to be right that's what i really emphasize when i'm teaching my coaching students to live a lean healthy lifestyle and just all these little habits stacked up right daily cardio even if it's just small things and like getting outside for a walk on a regular basis protein and vegetables with every single meal little things just just add up and i mean it doesn't seem like much in the moment but that little tiny change oh when it compounds over the course of several weeks several months and of course several years like it, it makes a huge difference and it's not like i've lost like a massive amount of weight but like over the last two years i've lost about 30 pounds which i mean if you look at break it down on a week by week basis it's not much weight at all but I didn't suffer in the process. I didn't deprive myself. I actually felt really good and I feel better the way I do now. And I'm leaner than I've been in years. I mean, like right now I weighed myself this morning. I was like 188 pounds on the scale and I feel great. It's the, the leanest I've been in years. Like in the past, I've been as heavy as 240. And that's, that's not a healthy weight, right? That's not a healthy weight for me. Granted, okay, I was strong at that weight and I could lift heavy and blah, blah, blah. But man, I, I when, when you're overweight, like even if it's bulked up weight and you're working out in the gym, like you still suffer the same problems as people who are overweight and just sloppy fat weight. Like I didn't have good cardio conditioning. I didn't have, you know, my blood pressure was higher than it should be and just didn't feel good with all that extra weight. But now that I'm leaner and, and lighter, I feel great. I mean, and this is the way I want to stay. I mean, I enjoy it and it just feels good to be this way. So that's the reason why I'm smaller. I choose to be, and I'm, I'm just not getting fed anymore. <laughs> that's the secret, right? It's, it's one thing to know how to lose weight. It's another thing to know how to keep it off, right? If you know how to keep it off and enjoy the process, man, you, you got it made, right? That's the secret. That's where most people, you know, drop the ball, right? They can go on a crash diet and lose it, but if you can't maintain it, then it's it's all for naught, right? That's that's the trick. Learn how to not get fat in the first place. All right, who else? We have Paul joining in. 
Paul's a superstar, a success story, right? Paul started training in his 60s and turned his life around. And I have a huge respect for the man. Uh, anyway, he says, I, I have been able to get a few minutes to say hi. He says he's new to this. I mean, Paul's been following my stuff for, for several years now, but he doesn't normally tune into the live video chat. So, again, nice to see you, Paul. Welcome to the chat. Uh, who else is joining in? Chad is joining in. Uh, saying niacin is horrible for people with skin conditions. Niacin, it's uh, one of the B vitamins. It's in moderation. Like the problem with niacin is if you take too much of it, yeah, it can really, uh, it, it has, it doesn't feel good. Like if one of the, one of the tricks that bodybuilders used to use back in the day is to you sometimes take niacin to help them pump up before a competition because it, it has this flushing effect on the skin. And, um, I, I tried it before and it actually made me sick to my stomach and I threw up. I mean, I, if, if you take too much of it, it, it has a negative effect, but you need it in, in moderation. For me, I don't supplement with like pure niacin, but I will take small amounts of it in a B complex supplement that I use. So I use a, a vitamin B complex that has all the B vitamins. And of course there is some niacin in there, but it's, it's in low dose. So I find it, I can tolerate that. But in high doses, yeah, it's it's definitely not a not a comfortable supplement to take. Holy smokes, guys! Look at this. We've been doing this for over an hour. Like, where where does the time go? Right? Like, I just I, I it flies by. Like, I get doing these video chats, and like an hour is like like a fart in the wind. It just flies by. I'll do a few more questions, and I'm going to clue it up because I actually have a a coaching call with one of my students coming up very shortly. So I uh, I have to clue this up, sure. But uh, who else do we have? Alex is joining in, or sorry, Axel, not Alex, Axel is joining in. How many days a week of weight training is optimal with a very busy job working over 40 hours a week? Look, I would recommend three days a week would be optimal. That's what I personally do myself. But if if for some reason you can't get to the gym three days a week, even twice a week is, is good. Like bottom line, you, like you can do two total body workouts a week at the gym. And then if you want to supplement that with some body weight exercises at home, like you can still make great progress. It doesn't always have to be going to the gym. And I, I do that myself. Like sometimes if I don't have time to go to the gym for a full workout, I'll do a, maybe some body weight exercises or some dumbbell exercises at home. And that, that works as well. Right. But, uh, I, ideally, I, you're looking for, for the optimal, I, I would say every other day or three days a week would be optimal, right? Uh, Frederick's asking, do you use apple cider vinegar for gut health? Uh, I, I do. Yeah, I, I, apple cider vinegar can definitely help with, with gut health and digestion. You, what I usually do is I'll mix up some apple cider vinegar uh, with water. Uh, sometimes you squeeze in some some lemon juice in there, some fresh lemon. And that's like a nice little concoction, you know, to help. It helps with digestion. It's also very alkaline, even though like apple cider vinegar and, and lemon juice is, is acidic, when your body consumes it, it actually helps with the alkalinity, right? So it's, it can help aid with digestion, gut health. And it's, it's not a fat burner, but it can help with fat burning, because it can help to curb your appetite, uh, reduce some of the sugar cravings and things like that. So indirectly, it can help aid with, with fat burning. And it's, it's just a, a good, healthy thing to have. But if you're going to use it, start off small. Like, don't go overboard. Like, a lot of times when people hear something is good, then they think, well, I got to, you know, jump, you know, head first and start, you know, consuming way too much. I mean, just start off small. I mean, like, have a, one thing that you could do is, like, each morning have, like, a... a, a tall glass of water and put in a few spoonfuls of apple cider vinegar and squeeze in some lemon juice in with it and, and just have that as, as a way to start your day, you know, hydrate your body and get some of that, uh, you know, the, the uh, apple cider vinegar and lemon in there as well. I like the combination of apple cider vinegar and lemon. Like you could use either or, but when you combine them together, it has a nice synergistic effect and they work better in combination. All right, try and answer a few more before we clue it up. Uh, why, why Ra is tuned in, says, I subscribed to your channel since I was in college back in 2014. You're a really big inspiration for me. Thanks for all you do. Hey, glad. I appreciate the support over the years. I mean, 2014. So, I mean, it's going on six years now. That's, 
I mean, in the greater scheme of things, like six years in, in internet years is like a long time, but man, I've been doing this so long, like six years, like 2014 doesn't seem like that long ago to me. It's crazy. Like I, I started this back in 97, right? Like e even that's when I look at it, I mean, like it's, it's just flown by. It's crazy how fast time flies. Complex graphics is saying, what is the best way to build large lower chest? We already kind of covered that. I'm not sure if that's a repeat question. So we already covered some chest exercises earlier in the video chat. So I'm not going to repeat that here. If, if you're just joining in, then you can go back and watch the replay. And of course, the way it is with these, when I post the replays, I'll put in the timestamps as well. So um, like for all the past video chats we do, you can open it up and there's timestamps for all the different questions. So you can always go back and jump to the topics that interest you the most. Um, Mad Evil is the same. My squat progress seems to lag behind all my other big lifts. Squat accessory lifts, would you recommend help fix that? The most I have trouble getting out of the hole. All right. So to build up the squat. Hamstrings. Big one, like when it comes to the squats, the, usually the the the, big, the biggest thing that's going to hinder your progress is is hamstrings, glutes, and back, like the the posterior chain. Like that's a lot of people think like the quads are are the big mover in the squats. I mean, in reality, it's 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 more hamstrings, glutes, and back. Like that's that's what's going to build a big squat. So, uh, box squats fantastic exercise that you can do. And I have a video, it's an older video, but it's, hey, it still works just the same. <laughs> just do a search Lee Hayward box squats or even just, you know, YouTube search box squats. There's lots of videos on box squats, but that's a great exercise to do. Uh, good mornings, another phenomenal exercise to improve your squats uh, because again, it builds up the hamstrings, builds up the glutes, builds up the lower back. Uh, that's a, definitely a good one to do as well. Uh, lunges, you know, split squats, those are other exercises that can really help uh, strengthen those areas. Uh, what are some other ones that I'd recommend? Oh, those are probably the big ones for sure. You know, the box squats, the good mornings, and again, probably some form of a split squat. Uh, or, you know, you can refer to it as a bench lunge. You know, the, the, those exercises are some really good ones. Another thing that can help as well is uh, doing some plyometric work, like jump squats. You know, just, just with your body weight, that's another great exercise that can really help to build that explosive strength. Like sink down into a squat and then just explode up and jump as high as you can uh, just with your body weight. Like you can do that either on, a, that could be a separate workout on its own or it could be like a finisher to, to a leg day or a squat day. Uh, but, you know, plyometric work like that is a really good one for building that explosive power to help, uh, you know, generate that strength, especially when you're you're coming out of the bottom of the squat. Uh, how do you warm up for a one rep max on a bench press? Multiple sets of low reps. Um, I, I have videos that explain how to warm up. Um, I think just, just do a search for Lee Hayward warm up. And you should see those videos. But bottom line, when it comes to warm up sets, multiple sets of low reps. One of the, the problems when people are going for a heavy, like a one rep max is they do too many reps on their warm-ups and they end up burning their, themselves out on their warm-up sets and it limits their strength on their max set. So I would start off like maybe just the empty barbell for, for 10 reps just to kind of get in the movement of the exercise. And as, as far as the number is concerned, I mean, it's going to depend on your individual strength level, like how many warm-ups that you need. But do several progressively heavier warm-up sets, but probably stop the reps at five reps. And then once the weight starts to get progressively heavy where you're starting to, to work a bit and you're getting closer to your one rep max, you can even do like sets of three reps, sets of two reps, or even sets of single reps. But do the progressively heavier weight and get used to the to, to lifting the weight, but don't burn out on reps. Like don't rep out to failure when you're trying to do a one rep max. Uh, I mean, as, as you get up in the weight, like you can even just do sets of singles. Like as you're getting close to that one rep max and you're trying to test it, Right. You can even just do a, a single. Uh, another thing that's important is take adequate rest in between those those sets, because in order to generate maximum power, you need to let your body rest. And it's not just rest in terms of like letting your heart rate come down or, you know, catch your breath. It, it's rest so that your body can regenerate its ATP. 
It's adenosine triphosphate. That's the energy system that's used for high intensity explosive power, right? That's your, your power energy. Like we've got different energy systems. The ATP energy system is the power one. You know, the one that's used for like muscular endurance, that's like the lactic, ac lactic acid energy system. And then the one that's used for cardiovascular conditioning is the aerobic energy system. So for ATP to be regenerated, you need long rest periods. So when you're attempting like a one rep max on the bench, rest three minutes between sets, three full minutes. I know it's like, it seems like forever and you're just sitting there like, man, I, I feel good to go. But trust me, rest that extra time and it will allow the ATP in your body to regenerate so that when you do the set, you'll be able to exert maximum force. But uh, th that's the big thing is don't burn out on the warm-ups and make sure you get adequate rest between sets. All right, I'm actually going to clue it up, guys. I know there's a whole bunch of other questions there. Or let me just see. Oh, actually, there's not that many more questions. Okay. <laughs> we have a few more, so I'll see if I can bang them out. Uh, that was the one rep max. Oh. Frederick saying, when you say you used to eat like crap, what is crap for Lee Hayward? Crap for, for me back when I was eating like crap, uh, like I would have pizza. I would have um, like processed foods, um, you know, bread, cereal. Um, what else would I have? Too, too much stuff like peanut butter. Um what else would I eat too much of? Um, so sometimes it's, it's, it's not always like pure like crap crap. It's not like necessarily going to McDonald's or, or eating like gummy bears and then stuff like that. But sometimes just eating too much of the wrong things, like too many carbs, too much fat, too much calories in general a lot of times. Uh, but when it comes to some crap foods that I would sometimes give into, pizza was a big one, right? I, I used to eat a lot of pizza because um, it was quick and convenient and it tastes good. Um, but nowadays, like, I, I really don't crave it as much anymore. Um, another thing, chips, like, you know, potato chips or, or, or um, even some of the, the healthier chips, like, you know, the, these uh, crispy minis uh, or some of these popcorn chips or whatever. Like, they, they try and make them seem like they're healthier versions, but it, it's still all chips right? Like whether it's, it's a potato chip or whether it's a, a baked corn chip or, you know, a, a rice chip or what, like it's still all crap. It's still empty calories, but I used to eat a lot of those too. And, you know, just cakes and cookies and, and stuff like that, right? Just, just eating too much of that stuff, type of stuff and, and breads and, and, you know, just ice cream, another crap food that I used to eat. Uh, what else? Right. Just, just, the, the, the shit that you shouldn't be eating. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I would get guilty of it and I, I'd eat that stuff because I mean, it was quick, it was convenient and, and it tasted good. And I'd always justify it by saying, oh, I'll get back on track tomorrow. I'll get back on track on Monday. And of course, you know, when, when you say that, like, I'll give you a tip right now. Like, if you do indulge in a cheat meal and you eat some junk food, don't say, I'll get back on track tomorrow or don't say, I'll get back on track on Monday. Get back on track for your very next meal, the very next meal. So, like, if, if you cheat now, your next meal, get back on track. And as long as you keep getting on back back on track your very next meal, you minimize the damage. Because here it is. Let's, it's Friday afternoon. Let's say that I, I'm, I give in to the cravings and I, I give in to temptation and I have a moment of weakness. And I say, all right. Domino's, send Lee Hayward a jumbo pizza with the works, right? And I call him up, and then the delivery man comes with the pizza. And, of course, I eat the pizza, and I say, oh, I blew the diet today. Oh, you know what? Screw it. I'll get back on track on Monday. Well, guess what's going to happen? This is Friday. I'm going to eat like crap on Friday, of course. Then on Saturday, I'll say, well, you know what? Ah, screw it. I already blew it on Friday. I'll eat like crap on Saturday, and I'll eat like crap on Sunday, and I'll get back on track on Monday. Well, I just have three days of damage. Right. Whereas if I said I'm going to get back on track for the next meal, then you only have one meal of damage. So you want to minimize the damage and maximize the good. So that's one strategy. Whenever you have a cheat meal and, and it's inevitable, everybody's going to have a cheat meal from time to time. I still have cheat meals from time to time. Right. But when you have them, get back on track for your very next meal. Don't do this. Oh, I'll get back on track tomorrow or I'll get back on track on Monday. That's that's too long. You're letting too much damage happen. 
And that's where you get fat. It's all the little decisions, right? It's not one big thing. It's all the little things that compound over time, right? Like, if, so that's, that's the biggest tip that I can give you right there when it comes to, uh, you know, keeping your diet clean is get back on track for your very next meal. Same with your workouts. If you skip a workout, don't say, oh, I'll start again next week. I'll start again on Monday. No, you start again the, the very next workout, right? If you skip a workout today, well, get your ass to the gym tomorrow, right? Don't put it off. Right? The soon, sooner you can get back on track, the better. All right. With that being said, guys, I'm going to clue it up because I have to run now. I have actually a coaching call scheduled very, very soon. So um, I'll have the replay of this posted up and, along with the timestamps. And if you hopefully enjoyed it, if you would like some help, if you would like some help with either a workout, nutrition, or you just have some questions that you want to ask me privately, stuff that you're probably not comfortable sharing with online, which is totally cool, I understand, send me an email. My email address, leeh at leehayward.com. Send it to me and I will respond. I actually respond to my own emails. Yes, it's not a robot. It's not an autoresponder. It's actually me. I actually respond to them. So if you want to ask me a question or you want some help, feel free to message me and we can chat and see if we can come up with a realistic action plan that works for you. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed the video chat. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You know, I always appreciate those thumbs up. That helps. And uh, I look forward to talking to you next Friday. So have yourself a great weekend and take care. Over and out. And the stream.